It's good to be here with you tonight to celebrate ALDEF, an organization with which I have such a long history. For over a decade, we litigated cases together and were neighbors at 99 Hudson Street. And I was, uh, I was part of Margaret Fung's team. And so I'd like to raise a tribute to the great work that ALDEF has done for many years and that they've shared with me uh, as a litigator at the Legal Defense Fund. Thank you, ALDEF. It, it's a particular honor to be here this evening to raise tribute to my friend and colleague at the bar, Neil Kotyal. Neil, by any fair account, is one of the finest lawyers in the United States of America. He's one of the most influential attorneys of his time. He's argued 24 cases before the United States Supreme Court. Now, arguing 24 cases before the United States Supreme Court is a pretty big deal. But I'm sure that all of you will recognize that it's not as big a deal as having appeared three times on the Colbert Report. <laughs> now, many of you may have the opportunity to argue 24 cases before the United States Supreme Court. The court is not going anywhere. But I promise you this evening that none of you will have three opportunities to be on the Colbert Report. But Neil's talents don't only go toward comedy, they go to important matters and to the core matters that we believe in as Americans. While a professor at Georgetown Law School, Neil was lead counsel in the landmark post 9-11 case of Hamdan v. Rumsfeld. This case challenged then President Bush's military tribunals for immigrant detainees held at Guantanamo. When asked by his client why he chose to step into the breach in this case, Neil said, America doesn't treat people differently because of where they come from. We fought a civil war in part about the idea that all people are guaranteed certain rights. And chief among those rights is a right to a fair trial. As Deputy Solicitor General of the United States, Neil defended the constitutionality of the Voting Rights Act in the important case of Northwest Austin v. Holder. Now, I had the great pleasure to participate with Neil in that case, and I consider it to be one of the great good news, bad stories of my career. The good news story is that I had the opportunity to learn from and participate in litigation with the great Neil Kotchal. The bad news is that it required standing at the podium behind him on several occasions, both in preparation and at the United States Supreme Court. And that was a rather humbling experience. But we live to tell another day on the strength of Neil's efforts. Also as acting Solicitor General, Neil did something that will mark history in our country. Facing great challenge and criticism, he decided to do something that no previous Solicitor General had had the um, courage to do, or perhaps the focus to do. And Neil confessed error in the infamous case involving the executive order 9066, which authorized the force removal of over 120,000 Japanese Americans during World War II. The, Su the Supreme Court decisions upholding the wartime convictions of Fred Korematsu and Gordon Hirabayashi have been widely discredited but Neil was moved to take official action, and take action he did. When asked about the importance of that decision, Neil put it this way, the stories you hear will break your heart about people who were interned and are still too ashamed to talk about it. 
He said, you never want to burn somebody's memory, but what happened was so horrendous that I ultimately decided I had to do it. Neil is the leading appellate lawyer at Hogan Lovells. He's also the Paul Saunders professor at Georgetown Law School, and I understand that we are joined by Mr. Saunders this evening. After Neil's confession of error in the infamous internment case, Attorney General Eric Holder presented Neil with the Edmund Randolph Award, the highest award that the Justice Department confers on a civilian. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in recognizing my friend and a terrific advocate, Neil Katyal.